This is the new LU Saturn II, and as you can see it is a bit bigger than the original Saturn. It also bumped up its resolution of a screen to 8K over the older 4K one. And since we're on the topic of screens, the new Saturn has a built-in screen protector, made from a tempered glass. Which is great because I accidentally ruined my screen on my other printer and had to replace it. And with this screen protector, you just have to replace the screen protector and it should be a lot cheaper. And admittedly, you shouldn't be breaking your screen like I did, but things happen sometimes. But anyways, right out of the box, this thing is pretty much ready to go. You just have to remove all the little plastic protection pieces. And check out these massive bolts on the build plate along with the giant hand knob on the top. This should make working with them a lot easier. When it comes to the vat, it's held in with two screws and it has two built-in handles to easily pick up the vat. And if you do get one of these, make sure you remove all the plastic protection films. I've seen people with previous printers leave them on not knowing and print with them and get terrible results until they figured out that they needed to take that off. I am happy to see that they have the extended bolts on the bottom side of your vat. This way you can set it down on a flat surface without it touching the FEP sheet and ruining it or getting stuff stuck to it. And I say FEP sheet because that's what everyone uses, but it looks like Elegoo is using a PFA release liner now, and it's a different type of plastic, I guess. So we'll have to see how that holds up over time and works in general. So you might have noticed this USB port. Well, this happens to be for the supplied charcoal air filter. You just pretty much plug it in and it'll turn on whenever the machine is running and will help with the fumes from the resin. Leveling the build plate is the same as all the Elegoo printers. You just loosen the two bolts on the build plate so everything is freely moving and in the software tell it to lower to home. The one big difference is it comes with its own leveling card that is much thicker than the standard A4 paper that you'd be using for the other printers. Just so you know, this is 0.6 millimeters thick. But anyways, all I need to do now is tighten these up and then set everything to zero. And the machine will be leveled. I'm going to be using some aqua gray 4K resin from Frozen. Seeing that this is an 8K printer and this is what I have on hand, this will be the first time I've ever used this resin and this printer, so I'm going to do some test prints first to make sure I get all my settings dialed in. With the settings for this resin, it took about an hour and a half to get these test prints done, but they came out really good and it looks like all the details are there that I'm looking for and nothing on it failed. If anything, the only problem I see is a little bit of overexposure on the back end of this. So let's see how it does printing a model with a bunch of details, like this miniature of Dark Magician Girl. As you can see, it printed out fine, but I need to remove all these supports now. And here we go with all of the supports removed. I did break this spot here, removing the supports. And in the hair, you can see a slight layer shift due to it not being supported properly. There's also this weird hole in the top of the hat, and it looks like I forgot to add supports to the hair right here, along with underneath the bottom part of the staff. This was printed at 0.05 millimeter layer height, so there's going to be a little bit of these layer lines at the top of the hat. And the last thing is the base of this was connected to the supports that were on the build plate, so taking them off kind of ruined the bottom area of the base. All in all, this came out pretty good, and a lot of the problems with it are all my errors, and they can be fixed by printing it again. So instead of printing it again at this size, why don't we do it bigger, seeing that this printer can print bigger objects? And I'm also going to be doing it in multiple parts. So the head and body are all on this one. And as you can see, it failed on the supports right here, but it looks like it caught itself and it should be fine. So I just need to get this into my wash system to clean off all the extra resin and remove it from our build plate so I can start printing the base and remove all of the supports from this. I'll be using the supply clippers to separate these two pieces, and it looks like the front hair piece right here wasn't supported correctly, so it's really short for some reason, but it's still connected. But it looks like everything else came out pretty good from what I can see. I normally don't print large and heavy objects like these, so this is a great test for me to figure out how to do this and how to add my supports and how much supports I need for things. Seeing I thought those two would be perfect for the hair in the front, and obviously they weren't. But anyways, with all the supports removed, I can start curing this and start working on the base part. As you can see, there's a color change in this, and that is due to me running out of the 8K resin. So I had to switch to a different one, and then the last bit of it is done in the 8K resin. So it's a mix of 4K and 8K resin. And getting this off the build plate this time was a chore. It was really stuck on here. And here it is with all of its supports removed. And it's looking pretty good, other than the little pock marks from all of the supports, which are going to happen at this scale. And they all can be fixed by filling them in and sanding it down. And this piece is pretty heavy because it is solid resin. And so you can see these are the supports I removed it from, and these are supports from something I would normally print. There is a massive difference in how much waste material you get when printing larger objects. But anyways, let's get this all put together now. 
And this is just designed to all fit together and you can glue it all together so it won't fall apart on you. And as you can see, there's a lot of areas I could clean up where the supports were, but for now I'm just going to show it like this. I do think it came out pretty good printing something this big on the printer, basically my third print into it. And all the parts line up pretty good with one another, besides where the base meets the body part, and it needs to be sanded a little bit more, the supports are kind of holding it up. And here's both of them side by side, so you can see the massive size difference. It took about 4 hours to print the small one, and about 20 hours total for the large one. So besides those models, I also printed in a castable resin, and as you can see, these came out really good with really high details on these rings. And if you've watched some of my previous videos, this is a 3D scan of a wax model. So now I have an STL file of it that I can print as many times as I like, and in an upcoming video I'll be showing how to turn these into solid silver or any metal you want really. And if you're wondering what resin I use, it's Sariatech Cast. And this is a pretty good castable resin, and it's on the cheaper end of all the castable resins as well. So to sum up my thoughts on this printer, it is a great printer. It has really high resolution with the options of printing very large. There are some things that this printer doesn't have that others do that might make it a deal breaker for some people, like the lack of Wi-Fi capability or even an Ethernet port, seeing that the older one did have one. One other thing is the VAT itself. It has a max line, which is great so you won't overfill it, but it doesn't tell you what max is in milliliters or anything and it doesn't have increments on there like other printers do that tell you how many milliliters each increment is which are really helpful if you're running low on resin or you want to see if you have enough to print a particular model but those are all just suggestions to make this printer even better than it already is but if you'd like to get one of these for yourself you can order it from the elegoo website i'll have links to everything in the description below or you can wait until it comes to amazon and it'll be around 600 dollars well thanks for watching and if you like this video you might want to check out some of these other videos i have on the screen now